Good morning and welcome to this episode of Superior Angling. We are here in the first filming trip in the new Lund. She's a beauty. We are out here in the Apostle Islands today. Now this is kind of like the, you get that fall feeling in the air. The lower clouds, definitely more windy than your summer weather patterns. But that's what I like about this area in the Apostles is there's a lot of islands. You can hide from the wind. And usually no matter the day, you can put, you can put fish in the boat. So that's what we're doing today is we are gonna target lake trout um that are kind of adjacent to a spawning structure now the the lake trout season is open until september 30th down here so we have all of september to get out here and chase lake trout but lake trout are starting to position themselves you know the females are starting to get their spawn starting to get loose i actually caught a trout a couple days ago that was dropping some spawn so you know it's it's getting it's getting here you know fall is here you got the wind you got the low clouds the cool cool temperatures 44 degrees this morning so it's chilly it's wavy, it's windy, but hopefully we're going to see some beautiful fish today in the new boat. I love it. Let's get after it. Everyone has their own definition of home. For Dave and Susan Bauer, it's the road. But when a crash and rollover put the brakes on a trip to Florida and stranded the Bowers in the middle of nowhere, they needed to rely on a little help from their friends in the faraway land of West Bend. West Bend issued a check for the damages so quickly that they were able to continue on to Florida in a new truck pulling a brand new trailer so they could still enjoy their non-refundable place in the sun. Ask your independent agent about putting a silver lining behind wherever it is you call home. So we're going to be running a mix of lead core and two downriggers, mainly just spoons. You know, these spoons have been been pretty good for us. Um, bright pinks, white backs, um, lead core, snap weights, kind of the, our water temps are still upper 60s. So we've got to get our baits down 50, 60, 70, 80 feet. So we're going to do that via downriggers and our, our planer boards and our gator boards are going to uh, get our baits out away from the boat. So three lines of person over here in Wisconsin waters, which is very nice. So it's just Busker and I in the boat today. We can run six rods. We can have a nice spread of lines out there. So um, we're going to drop this back. And yeah, I mean, what a beautiful, beautiful, I consider this fall day. I mean, it's, it's windy. It's, you know, it just has that fall feeling to it. And with that usually comes good lake trout. There we go, there, Rigger. Reel down to it. And that's a trout. First one of the morning. On the old trusty flasher and spinning glow right on bottom. That's absolutely deadly come August. And he's digging now. That fish just realized it was hooked. <laughs> Beautiful, you can't beat it. The first 10 minutes of trolling, we really didn't graph much, and obviously we didn't get bit. And about two minutes ago, we started graphing fish, and then this one hits, so. That's a good sign when you start to graph lake trout, because when you graph lake trout, you know they're usually gonna eat. We're into them, the graph is just lit up at 60 feet right now. This rigger's at 52 going over them with that white spoon. I wanna see this rigger pop too. That's, those are good marks. Oh, I love it down here. For those of you that don't know, we do a lot of guiding in the summertime. This is where we run pretty much all of our guide trips. Just because fishing is pretty consistent here. You can always get on fish. You can always hide from the wind around these islands. I just love it down here. It's a magical, magical place. And into the Kelly Island we are. And we have a beautiful four or five pound lake trout to start the morning. You can't ask for much more than that. A windy and blustery day in very early September. I love it. Look at that lake trout. That's a beauty. That is a beauty. And this is the flasher, a little 20 inch dropper down to a spinning glow. That's money, man. That is money. Money, money, money. What a way to start the day. We're gonna throw this guy in the live well because when you get a fish 
that's a little bit smaller like this they're delicious eating and that's one of my favorite parts about down here versus the immediate Duluth area the trout down here their meat is just delicious it's fabulous more orange pinkish reddish meat I love it how much fun is that bones and bottom but got a fish popped off the rigger this is on that spin and go again we just boxed that laker and probably down for about five minutes and hooked up again not too bad there we go and then a nice laker on that spin and go same one literally just put it down for five minutes and that thing popped off again yeah, we're gonna keep that one too. Looks like a good eater. Put them in the box. Oh, Ooh. spin and go again. Uh, this Ooh. one doesn't want to move. What do you buddy. got? This one don't want to move. <laughs> See, it's a little bigger than the other one, that's for sure. The last 20 minutes, this thing's been hit three times now. And this one don't want to move. That's a heavy, heavy fish here. Oh Ooh. boy. Good thing Grant has those big hooks on there. <laughs> <laughs> oh buddy, look at that. That's a big fish, bud. I can't move them. Breaking in the new lawn the proper way with some nice Lakers. This one's gonna be a heavy one here. Look at that rod. <laughs> Sweet. Get five feet and he takes 10 back. <laughs> That's a big Laker. You see that tail on yeah, him? Yeah, that thing's a that thing's a chunk. I can't, I can't move them. We got a big trout on here. <laughs> Just Busker and I out here on Lake Superior. Wow. You gotta love it. September, man. September brings the magic. A lot of people say the lake trout don't fight. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. I think they fight pretty good. We nice. Are. Nice net. Here, I'll, gra <laughs> I'll grab the net from you, bud. <laughs> All right. Two hand process with this thing. Holy man. That is a toad, buddy. Barely hooked. Look at that one. That is a tank. Pretty. Not too bad for the third one of the day. On that spin and go, same one. Third fish on that. All right, we'll let this go back. Bye bye. See ya. Beauty. Sweet. That's a fish. Click, click, click. That is what I like to hear. Beautiful. Starting to get a little bit nervous there. Our first three fish were all on the spinning glow, on the down rigger, right next to bottom. Which, sure, it's fine plucking off those bottom fish, but if you're really gonna have a good day and get a lot of numbers, you gotta get fish going on boards. And this is our first board fish of the morning, and it feels like a good one. Man, September brings crazy winds, unpredictable waves, but you just gotta watch that forecast and really focus on areas that you can hide from the wind if need be, and that's what we're doing today. Like, there's big rollers coming in here. I hate saying wave size on camera because it's always deceiving through a camera lens, but they're pretty decent sized coming in here. And it's forecasted to blow even harder today. So we're fortunate to be out here putting, getting on fish. This is fun. So one of my favorite parts about these boards is these clips are just so easy. They come off so nice. You can do it yourself in waves. And here's our snap weight. So that might not have even been down there 50. It might've been down there like 45 because we only have 30. We, let our leg core out, clipped on our snap weight, and only let out 30 more feet of line. So that snap weight's not having a huge influence on the total depth of that spoon. This fish is staying down. When that line gets to the, when you get that fish close and that line is still somewhat vertical, you know it's gonna be a good fish. There it is, spunky. Woo! That's a nice trout. There we are, we got her. <laughs> That's a nice trout, oh my goodness. That is a beauty. Look at this fish. Look at that fish, that's a beauty, guys. Solid, I don't know, seven, eight pound fish. Just pristine, not a mark on her. That's what I love about the Apostle Islands. 
and the potential that exists down here. Awesome fish like this. Let's get her back. Look at that, down she goes. All right, there we go. That's awesome, man. What a nice fish that was. Even, even though we have warmer water temps, we're catching these fish out of relatively shallower water. Um, you know, I kind of I kind of like to avoid fishing 120 to 140 feet of water this time of year Yes, there's a lot of lake trout down that deep, but they do not release well um, You know if you want to pluck off your limit But it's just not ethical to keep catching them that deep and releasing them because they're not going to release very well Right now we're in 70 80 feet of water that fish was suspended at 45 50 feet Releases just fine buskers big one that he just caught a minute ago Released just fine, you know, so um, always pay attention to that this time of year, our water temps are cooling off, but you know we still are, are in the upper 60s. So you gotta be conscious of water temperature and kind of the overall ethical aspect of catching a lake trout. There's a fish on that long line. Nice, nice, nice. Straighten our boat out here. Not easy fishing this time of year with the wind, the waves, but if you can get out here, you're gonna have active lake trout. I like those long line fish. It's nice, instead of running, you know, four boards, two on each side, just run a long line. It's just as productive, if not more productive than a planer board. You don't have to worry about clearing. You don't have to worry about getting that board off. So many of my big fish this year have come on long lines. Right behind the boat. So this one is a little bit deeper. Four colors of lead, attach a snap weight, let out a hundred feet, so. Getting that bait down there, 55, 60 feet. Five trout in a boat an hour? You can't go wrong in there. Hey, yeah, there's this guy. That's just what I love about this area is you see your average trout is so nice, you know, that three to six, seven, eight pound average. May and June, every day, on every guide trip back in May and June, we were getting a big one over 20 pounds. I mean, it's just, it's such a fun area down here. There we go. Look at that, guys. That's another beautiful, beautiful trout. On a big old spoon. Look at there. Awesome, I love it. On that big spoon size, that's that N4. Bigger spoon. Beautiful, beautiful lake trout. It's alive out here in September. Put up with the wind and waves and you're gonna catch trout. I love it, I love it. You can't ask for much more than this. I don't know what the rest of the day is gonna bring. This wind is really picking up. We might have to move and find some different areas to fish, whether we might jig or cast. I don't know. We're just out here playing around, having fun in the Lund 2175 Limited. It's a beautiful day. All right, so let's talk like terminal tackle here for a minute. We have our fluorocarbon leader coming down to our spoon and we just use a simple cross lock snap. BMC makes them, they come in packages like these. I mean, it's a, it's a simple cross lock snap. There's no need for a barrel swivel here because I have a swivel up here on my line farther. And for that, again, we just use a ball bearing swivel from VMC as well. So, um, you know, just a simple cross lock snap. They're easy to change out. Make sure that they're durable enough. Lake Trout can have the power to open these up. And that's the last thing. It happened to me last year, ice fishing, where a big fish opened up my swivel because it pulled so hard. Heartbreak. You know, get a big enough size where, you know, it's gonna be durable enough. These are size, what are these? These are size five. A little bit on the big side. Um, the next size down would probably be even more ideal. But I, I like to run oversized terminal tackle out here. So that's all that is. When we talk about snap weights, these are Gator Tackle makes clips like these. Offshore Tackle makes clips. A lot of people make different clips like these. They're red. Gator Tackles are red, Offshore Tackles are red. And the red ones have a pin in them. So if you open them up, you can see closely in there that there's a little pin that sticks up. Put your line behind that pin, this cannot fall off your line. Um, you know, if you put it in front of your, the line in front of the pin, it'll slide off easily. You get it behind that pin, this cannot slide off your line. And that's all that is, is a snap weight right there. So um, yeah, that's kind of all there is to it. So this lead core, down, our down riggers were working really well earlier today. They're dead right now. All our fish are coming up higher on boards. As the sun comes up, our lake trout are rising with it. That's awesome to see. Walleye fishing, you don't see that. But lake trout, they love bluebird skies and sun.
That's the fish. That gator one. He got throttled. Oh, September is bringing the heat. This is a good fish. This is a good one. This is that same spoon and same setup. I think this is that fourth fish in the same rod. We are dialed right here. Same presentation. And again, that's why it's imperative to, after we let out all our lead core, we are very particular in resetting the line counter, attaching our snap weight, and then letting the line out because you have to be able to replicate that if it gets hit. Now, on the spool right here, one tick on the line counter, one foot on the line counter is definitely not equal to one foot of line, but who cares? It's just a value that you can use to replicate it. You know, this we let we were letting that snap weight out about 30 feet only after uh, all their lead core or 30 units whatever you want to call it you know and we just know next time we're going to put it back 30 as well and it keeps getting hit so that's the that's the whole thing about out here is you want to be able to replicate what works replicate what got that last fish and you're going to be catching more it's getting windy this might be our last fish in this spot and then we're going to have to move and fish behind a different island because this wind is picking up it's supposed to be blowing 20 to 25 out of the east here shortly. 44 degrees this morning, guys. I mean, that's that's chilly. Fall is definitely in the air. But your lake trout come alive. You know, walleyes, panfish all spawn in the springtime. Your lake trout start spawning right now and continue through late December, January even. Some species of trout will spawn in. So it's definitely uh, the start of the spawning season for these lake trout and I think they're pushing up onto the structure I mean it's definite structure right here that we're fishing and they're holding it on holding right onto the structure because we're graphing them down there you can definitely presume that they're scoping out some spawning spawning areas in that shallower water we're catching fish in 40 50 feet right now which is definitely a lot shallower than they were a couple weeks ago There we go. <laughs> Net and lake trout by yourself is not easy. Uh, that's a beautiful fish. Look at she just came unhooked too. That's a solid another. Every one of these fish is like six, seven, eight pounds. Like they're beautiful, beautiful lake trout. Let's take a look at her. That there is a gorgeous lean Lake Superior lake trout. And I say lean because it has a longer nose on it, more of a skinny demeanor. Just beautiful, beautiful fish. I love the Apostle Islands area. What a resource we have available to us. That's a beautiful fish. Let's get this thing back. There we go. And as a general rule of thumb, the shallower you catch your fish, the better they're going to release. I mean, I didn't even have to work that fish. I literally had the confidence just to toss it right in and the thing darted away because we're catching them shallow. That fish is only down there 30, 40 feet and over 50, 60 feet of water. So very, very shallow. Um, a lot of fishing out here takes place, you know, late August, early September takes place in very deep water. Those fish don't release very well. So we're just kind of choosing to target some shallower areas today and it's definitely paying off. That's awesome. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.